Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is JJ and this is the Dividend Freedom YouTube channel where I talk everything about dividend investing as well as documenting my own dividend investing journey here on the channel. If that's something that interests you guys, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. Now in today's video, I'm going over three different ETFs that I am personally looking at adding to the dividend portfolio. And these ETFs are focused on semiconductors. Now real quick, I wanna explain to you guys why I decided to focus on this at this point in time in the stock market on why I wanted to add a semiconductor to the portfolio. Now, I've been going back and forth on adding a single stock like Intel or something like NVIDIA to the dividend portfolio, but ultimately, I decided to actually go with a semiconductor ETF. Now, I have not made that selection as of yet, but I did want to go over three different ETFs I am currently looking at, and we'll end up picking one of them. I haven't picked one yet, but I will be going over all three of those in today's video to show show you guys what I'm looking at, what I'm looking for, and kind of what I'm using as information to decide which ETF I do want to add to this portfolio. Now, another reason I chose an ETF over the single stocks is because when it comes to the semi semiconductor market, it's very tough to pick the winner. There, You have a lot of people who are diehard NVIDIA fans. You got a lot of diehard AMD fans. You, know, you have a lot more people who are starting to pick up the value type play, which is Intel, and people are going back and forth on which one they like, but it's really hard to pick the correct stock that's going to outperform in the long run. That's why I decided it was best for this space in the stock market to end up deciding to go with an ETF. So I, instead of trying to find the needle in the haystack, I can just buy the entire haystack and get a re overall relatively average performance based on all how all the different semiconductor based companies do. And it's not just Nvidia, Intel and AMD, as you will find out here in a second, all three of these ETFs do pay a dividend and they are made up of many different types of semiconductor stocks, which we will look at pretty soon. Now, first, before we get into those three different semiconductor ETFs, I do have a quick announcement from Webull, guys. If you have not already, make sure you get your 12 free stocks. How you can do that is by clicking the link down below in my description. I'll have a pinned comment as well. Once you click that link, sign up for an account with Webull and fund that account with any amount of money, you will get 12 free stocks that could be valued up to $30,600. Guys, it's free money. Why wouldn't you do it? Make sure you click the link down below in my description to sign up for Webull today. All right, so as I mentioned with semiconductor type stocks, they have been hit heavy. So if we look over the past year, Intel's down almost 50%. Another popular one, AMD is down 33%. And NVIDIA over the past year is down 42.8%. If we go to a year to date, it's even worse. Almost 60% for NVIDIA. For AMD, it's over 53%. And for Intel, it's still down around that 47% mark. So pretty massive decline in stock prices for these semiconductor type companies. Now, you may be wondering, well, why would you want to add a semiconductor company to your portfolio when they are getting hammered like they are right now? Well, here's the thing, guys. This is kind of how I like to invest. See, the best time to buy stocks like this that you know are going to benefit the overall society because semiconductors are used in technological advances for a lot of things we make today for mobile devices, for automobiles, for medical devices, for data storage centers. These are the building blocks for technological advancement, and that is why I want to own these in my portfolio. As technology advances, we will be using semis to be able to power these types of devices and technology in order to grow as a society. So that is why I wanted to add these to my dividend portfolio. Now, as I was mentioning, I also think that these are a great value play given at these levels. Now, I do think a lot of these companies have been hit heavy and some people may be like well why are you trying to add a semiconductor to your portfolio when there's a shortage you know the performance have been shit lately and that is exactly why I want to add them to my portfolio now I think they have come down in price enough to where they are an attractive valuation hence why I'm now choosing to add semiconductors to the portfolio now versus at all-time highs back in you know February March of 2021 I'm also a big believer in investing in companies that are are, people are not as excited about, you know, whenever the times are like they are right now, whenever stocks are continuously on the downtrend, when you're down over 50% year to date in a company like NVIDIA or Intel or AMD, that is whenever you can make good purchases. You can make a lot of money whenever you buy stocks at the right time. Now, could these companies continue to go down over 10, 20%? Absolutely. 
But that's another reason why I'm choosing to buy this ETF because I don't know which one's going to come out as the top dog five, 10 years down the road. And there may be a new player come up in the next couple years that will, may not be the top dog. So that is the reason why I am adding these to the portfolio. So like I said, I have three different ETFs I want to go over today that are semiconductor focused ETFs. And the first one on today's list is S0 or SOXQ. And that is the Invesco Semiconductor ETF. Now, all of these ETFs in today, they do track an index and they are using, their portfolio is made up of semiconductor type companies. So you'll see companies, instead of having, you know, uh, 500 different companies in this ETF, it's a lot smaller of holdings because, well, not every company out there is a semiconductor type company. So for SOXQ, it's currently trading at $19.24 and it does have a dividend yield of 1.39% and that is the highest dividend yield out of the three we will talk about today. Now, something else you want to keep in mind whenever you are purchasing or investing in, into ETFs is you want to look at the total expense ratio. Now, basically what that is, is that is an expense that you will have to pay for investing in this portfolio. And I tend to focus on relatively lower cost type index funds or ETFs like this expense ratio of 0.19%. Now looking at some of the characteristics of SOXQ, you can see it has a PE currently of 14.52, which given the past few years, I feel like that's a relatively decent value on a PE standpoint for these types of companies, these semiconductor companies. So an average PE would be 14.5. I think that's a pretty good time for me to start making and opening up a position in this ETF if I choose to do so. Now, the next big thing I wanted to look at is the overall portfolio of each one of these ETFs. So I'm gonna be showing you guys the top holdings in each ETF. So looking at SOXQ, you can see Texas Instruments is the top one coming in with an 8.43% uh, percent of the total ETF. Coming in at 8.43% of the total portfolio. Next one is Broadcom, then Qualcomm, NVIDIA, AMD, Analog Devices, NXP, KLA, Applied Materials, and then Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing is coming in with a 3.95, just under 4% of the total portfolio. Now, I can choose to view all of the holdings. I will say Intel is in here as well. They're at about 3.5% of the total fund, so you are getting all of those major semiconductor players as well as major players like Texas Instruments, Broadcom, all of these stocks I would love to have in the dividend portfolio. So I'm getting to own all of them in this single ETF alone. Now, as far as the number of holdings that is made up for SOXQ, it is 30 different companies that make up this ETF alone. So like I said, it is a little lower than the typical ETF I invest in, but that is because it is more focused on a certain sector within the market being semiconductors. Now, moving on to the second ETF, semiconductor ETF is XSD, and that is the Spider s and Semiconductor ETF. Now, the current price for XSD is $163.64 and it does have that expense ratio of 0.35. So a little higher than SOXQ, but to be honest, the difference between the two really isn't that extravagant for me to really bat an eye at. Now, if this was a 0.75 or a 1% expense ratio, that may have a lot bigger of reason why I chose to go with one ETF versus the other. Now, as far as the number of holdings that make up this ETF, it is 38. So there are eight more companies inside the Spider S&P Semiconductor ETF. And then for the 30-day SCC yield, it is only 0.34 which to be honest, that is the same price as the expense ratio. So technically the way I look at that is I'm my distribution I would be receiving as a dividend payout would go to cover the expense ratio. So I don't really like that just looking at it. But again, I do want to look at the holdings and let's take a look at the overall portfolio. And then we will look at the overall performance of all three of these ETFs today at the end of the video as well. So this makeup of these holdings are a little different. Some of the companies I'm honestly not really familiar with like wolf speed i can't even pronounce that one first solar rambus I've, i'm familiar with but not super uh silicon laboratories um, microchip technology so a lot of these different companies that i'm honestly not super familiar with so that tends to lead me a little more towards the other two etfs already just right off the bat but i did want to add this to the list because i do want to look into each one of these companies a little more if i do end up going with the uh, xsd etf to be able to see if that's the reasoning why I want to choose to invest 
with those different types of companies listed in that portfolio. Now, moving on to the third and final and probably the most popular semiconductor ETFs out of the three would be SMH, and that is the Vanek Semiconductor ETF, if I pronounce that correct. Now, the current price for SMH is just under $195. They do have a dividend yield of just over 1% coming in at 1.09%. The number of holdings that make up this ETF are 25, so it is the lowest lowest amount or least diversified ETF out of the bunch. And I'm not saying that as a downfall. I'm just saying it's the least amount of holdings that make up an ETF out of the three we're talking about today. The gross expense ratio for this ETF is 0.35. So right in line with XSD, the previous one we just talked about. And then let's take a look at the actual holdings of this company. And then again, we will look at the overall performance of these different ETFs. So looking at the top holdings based off net percentage of net assets, the Taiwan Semiconductor, is number one coming in at over 10% at 11.67. NVIDIA second at 8.44. Then a lot of this looks similar to the SOXQ ETF. We have Texas Instruments, Qualcomm, Broadcom, ASML, AMD, Intel. So a lot of the you know more popular, well-familiar type companies that we probably hear about every single day when we're looking at you know, these different types of stocks to add. So that is the actual holdings, the 25 that make up SMH. And so looking at these right off the bat, the, my favorite two here, I can tell you, is SMH and then also would be SOXQ. I, I want to dig a little bit more into XSD just because I'm not as familiar with the holdings, but definitely the, these types of companies are what I'm wanting to see in my portfolio. The Taiwan Semiconductor, NVIDIA, Texas Instruments, Qualcomm, Broadcom, Intel, AMD, you know, all these companies I would love to have in the portfolio. So that's exactly why I would love to own the semiconductor focused type ETF. Now let's take a look at the actual performance of these portfolios. So our um, uh, ETFs, excuse me. So looking based on the start time actually of SOXQ, that is the newest ETF that has been created and it was just started in June of 2021. So that is when we are going to be comparing these performances. As you can see, a lot of these are pretty similar when it comes to one another because they own a lot of the same companies. What actually shocked me when I was looking at this is that XSD, the ETF that had a lot of the holdings I wasn't super familiar with, is actually the best performer out of the bunch. So you can see SMH over the past year and a half or so, it has a performance of minus 21%. XSD is minus 11%. SOXQ has minus 22.6%. So XSD has actually outperformed these other two ETFs by nearly 10 or more percent. Now, again, past performance always doesn't mean that's what's gonna happen in the future, but I do like comparing ETFs and different holdings like this whenever you are able to compare these to one another. Now, that's another reason why I even kept this in the bunch and why I do want to look more into XSD before I make a decision to add these to the portfolio or one of these to the portfolio because I'm not going to add multiple ones. So I did see this performance here and I was like, okay, I do want to take a little bit better look at these other companies that make up XSD. So guys, those are the three semiconductor ETFs I am currently looking at adding to the dividend portfolio here relatively soon. When I do make my decision, you guys will know in either the next portfolio update or I'll make a specific video going over that ETF a little bit more in depth to show you guys some of the reasons why I ultimately went with that decision. So stick around, stay tuned for that. Again, hit that subscribe button if you have not already, guys. Also, don't forget to get those 12 free stocks by using that link down below in my description and signing up for Webull. It's free money. Like I said, why would you guys not do it? Also, if you're looking for a place to track your dividend income as well as a stock research tool, check out the dividendtracker.com. It's a software I created where you can track your dividend income as well as do any stock research for stocks you're looking to add to your portfolio or stocks you're looking to sell or just kind of doing some updates and seeing what your holdings are looking like. Guys, thank you all so much for watching and until next video, you all take care.